dishwasher? Yeah. Just me. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. Got good, a few good. things done. Nice. My video was so long. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is okay. It was super long. I actually, in the notes of yours, I wrote down that that probably could have been two or three videos because <laughs> of the different topics. But no, it was a good video though. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, that's the one that I posted in my Murray site. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do another one. And then I thought I did one earlier where I said, seize, you know, season your life. Oh, what is season your life? And it was probably like three minutes, but all I did was, was record. I didn't post it anyone. That wasn't live. That was just on my camera. So I didn't want to post that one because it wasn't live. And I thought, well, I did this other one. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> But I was like, I looked through, I'm like, okay, mine's the longest. I am long winded. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So you remember Chris, huh? Yeah. Like, I don't think that like we knew each other, knew each other, but we had, because it was such a small school, like I knew of him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he'd know who I was because I think he might've been at least two grades higher than me. One or two. Yeah. Probably something like that. Cause I was yeah. in Dan's grade. Yeah. Which I think. Danny was, I think, one year behind, I think. So, yeah, it's actually kind of nice outside. I went outside for a little bit and finished doing my one bush, and I'm like, wow, that's pretty nice. Is it good? Because after this call, I get to go walk my doggy, and yesterday I didn't walk him because it was not nice out. And so I well, was Well, it is now. I know we're it. supposed to. I know we're supposed to get rain later and my one friend said tonight or tomorrow we're supposed to have heavy storms so i may go mm. pick. okay just for a walk later too because it's nice out now for sure i see we have an iphone joined us debbie is that you that's me yes all Hi, right how are you guys? good welcome to the call welcome i saw that you did your homework as well great job yes yeah. Unfortunately, I won't edit my video because I don't have good connection in here where I am. So okay. I'm at All my right. store doing some work and I, there's not, I thought it would show up, but unfortunately not. All right. Well, that is okay. But I, didn't want to miss, but I didn't want to miss the call. So good. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Did, I did, just, just a quick question. Did those two people ever um, join yet? No, neither of them have requested or, or joined okay. yet. Well, I know the one couldn't make today's call, but the other one, she, she should have did it. So I don't know what, I don't know. You can't make people do stuff. So exactly. but she, requested, she asked me, she saw me and she reached out and asked me. So I thought for sure she would do it. Okay. Yeah. I haven't she asked seen me how anything. valuable it was and if it was helping and she's, yeah. So they could, they'll probably still do it. Just maybe not today. All right. Well, they'll be able to see the replays uh, once they yeah. do get in. Right. Sounds good. And I know it will be beneficial to them both. So good. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So that's great. Are you guys doing good? Yes, I am. Good. Yes, I am Emily. too. Good. Good to hear. So um uh I had eight eight people did the homework today. I'm oh, expecting wow. I'm expecting that all eight of those people will probably be on the call, hopefully a few more people as well. I just posted in the group that the Zoom room is open, so come on in. So hopefully Good. people see that and come on in. Well, they know one one thirty. you advertise that, right? Exactly, I yeah. tried to, but you know. So, you did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You do good at that, keeping Thank everybody, you. yeah. Thank you very much. That's one of the many reasons I like you so much, because you, you're good, I mean, some of these people that, do stuff they're not yeah they're not good at communicating but you yeah. are so thank you for that oh you're welcome i appreciate that compliment let's see um so do one of you want to talk about um how you felt about the video well i'll i'll start good, okay go, go ahead. ahead i mean go i ahead. like how mine was but i know it was long but i wasn't doing it for this purpose i should have done a separate one yeah because it was a little long but i i thought it went well you know i, I, I didn't did. get a chance to 
to you have to go back and look I it's, saw, it's I saw long it. because I, I actually have the site that i'm on it's my cooking site i, I have a small cooking okay. business which i haven't been doing any cooking for a while and i really felt to just kind of use some of my coaching and kind of help people and just connect and so Monday and then Wednesday, I gave them a little bit of stuff to think about. And this morning I thought, you know what? I don't want to do it every time. So I thought it's the weekend. Maybe I'll give them some game ideas. And we talked a little bit about, or, you know, I talked a little bit about some of it, but then I went into all these different games that we have. Oh, I can't wait to see it. That'll be good. So. Did you, and you shared it on this page too, right? Yes. Okay, I didn't get a chance to look. That's on my list to do. I'm gonna look at everybody's videos. I didn't get a chance to see all of them. I only saw, like I said, one of them so far. Two of them, maybe. Yeah. Hello, I see Kim and Phyllis and David all just joined us. How are you guys? Good. Good. I am just taking attendance as you guys come in, so don't mind me. <laughs> And Phyllis did hers. I saw it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, I, the, I, I watched it, and the only thing I could think about was, Barbara, why didn't you tell me I had a big wrinkle in my shirt? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't watch your live until after you were done with it because I was watching you on Zoom. I may <laughs> have said the most profound thing in history, and I... All I can focus on is the big wrinkle in the front of my shirt. You know what, Phyllis? I watched you and I didn't even see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay. Didn't even notice that. No. Nope. Huh? Nope. We are our own worst critics. I yes. think so. I didn't notice. I did now, not notice that. Now the funny thing is, I'll rewatch it and then I'll, I'll yeah. notice it because you brought it up. <laughs> you know, it's like, why didn't I pull my shirt down a little bit? I bet you, you hardly anyone has noticed that. To be honest now with you. That, now you all now everybody's gonna know yeah. well, i'm gonna watch the replay now phyllis okay yeah only because you told us all right <laughs> so we are getting a few people on here now now that we've got a nice handful why don't we go ahead and do a little bit of networking and those there are some of you who are on here religiously with me at 1 30 and i love that i appreciate that but say something different this time if um obviously still tell people who you are but um and what you do but try to say it in different words because there are some other people who also were on here every time with you so um who would like to go first and give maybe about one minute about who they are and what they do all right kim you're up <laughs> I didn't look at you honest. <laughs> but before you start, Kim, I just want to say hi, Janice. Welcome. We're about to do some introductions real fast. Kim, go ahead. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm glad to see everyone did their videos. They were fun to watch. Uh, I'm Kim Hall of the Halls Enterprises. I get to brand myself with my company, which is Amway. Uh, and how I brand myself is as a shopping concierge. I started working with busy professionals, helping them get products brought right to their door when they needed it, uh, helping save them time, steps, and money. And I have also branched into caregiver families, thanks to one of my customers or clients uh, recommending that I do so. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Um, if anybody, if you guys hear something that somebody says and you're like, oh, I want to know more about her or she sounds interesting or he or, you know, I'm not being a sexist here. <laughs> we, have, we have one man on the line and the rest women. Then you guys make sure that you reach out to them. It's okay for you to write in the chat if you want to say, you know, hey, Kim, let's make sure we schedule a Zoom or just reach out to them afterwards. All right, David, I see you have your hand raised, so I'm going to lower it and unmute you. And then I'm going to ask you to speak. Go ahead, David, you got the floor. David, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. David, you have the floor. You had your hand up. Do you have a question? Okay, he may not hear me. David, if you, uh, if you hear me and you would like to speak, can somebody type in the chat to David and ask him if he had a question? All right, let's move on. Um, Phyllis, tell us your one minute, who you are, what you do. Well, hello, I'm Phyllis Mamula. I own Design Tech Interiors in Hammond, uh, interior design firm. Uh, 
residential, commercial, and industrial for the last 35 years, and virtual as of this week. <laughs> We take your space from block to off, whether it be a corporate office, hotels, restaurants, or private homes, We're here to help. Awesome. Thank you, Phyllis. Let's move on to Debbie. Debbie George, tell us who you are, what you do. Hi, my name is Debbie George. How is everybody today? I am a... Um, I, I recently, within the past year, I love helping small businesses and I love connecting and helping uh, small businesses. So I set up at a venue to do just that, uh, located in Chicago Ridge, Illinois. Fantastic. All right, Marie, go ahead. Hi, I am Marie and I own SeasonYourLife.org. And uh, the reason I picked SeasonYourLife.org was because we all have different seasons in our life. And, you know, sometimes we need a little help in those seasons. Um, I've worked with kids for a long time. Um, now I'm working with um, moms, mostly mo busy moms, to help them kind of um, prioritize things in their life. I also have a small cooking business that kind of coincides with Season Your Life, where I help um, them. I make small meals or healthy um, desserts because I have an issue with gluten so I try to help families to where um, if they have something going on in their life or they need help with their kids I, I worked with kids for many many years I had a daycare for many years and I just um, felt like being a coach and um, offering services that way or offering services to help people with food, food prepping or just giving them knowledge to make something a little bit easier or healthier and so that everybody's happier, I just kind of uh, try to help and connect people that way. Thank you, Marie. Marie, I saved you for after a few people went because you're always my volunteer who goes first when I ask for volunteers. <laughs> All right, uh, Janice, welcome. I'm not sure if you're in a place where you're able to speak, but if you are, please unmute yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. And if you're able to have video on, that definitely helps us to get to know you better. Oh gosh, I'm I'm gonna put video on, but I gotta tell you, I just got done with the walk and my cat was on and I look like a wreck. That's so, all right. So I decided to just kind of jump and sit in my car while I was on my drive. But um anyway, so my name is Janice and um I actually work with a company that um is a DNA wellness company where they they actually analyze your supplements based off of what the profile tells that your body actually needs. Um, they do like a 35 page report and they're able to tell you really exactly what, what it is that you need to feel at your most optimal. The other quick thing is that my husband and I actually have a business where it's been, um, we help people get to, um, homes that cannot qualify for regular mortgages and, um, we do not go off of their credit or things like that. And we're able to help anyone, whether they have bad credit or not, be able to get into a home. All right, perfect. Thank you for joining us, Janice. Uh, David, can you hear me yet? And can you speak? Yes. Yet? Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Tell us who you are and what you do. My name is David Dinor. My company's Tax Free Retirement Solutions. What I do is I show people how to find the money. Yes, find the money. People are transferring money away every day, unnecessary and unknowingly from taxes through insurance, through investment. So what I do is I show them that. And what I do is I show them safe money. There's something called indexing. And with this very volatile stock market, people are losing money. So what I do is I show them how to get stock market gains without the losses. Also, what I do is I show them how to go in the tax-free bucket. And I also show them how to protect themselves from the state because if they go into probate, they got problems. So what I do is I do a variety of things, but my concern is to give people control through their principal of their money, accumulate wealth, and take the majority of their money out of these two buckets, which you can see behind me, the taxable bucket and the tax deferred bucket, and put them in the tax-free bucket. Because what I say is it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep from Uncle Sam. So that's what I do. Thank you, David. He must have been practicing that his whole life. 
<laughs> it was inside of me and it was ready to come out and it Good. just came out. That was fantastic. And David Thanks. shared with me today, I, I had six Zoom meetings this morning, most of them with you guys. And one of them was with David and he shared a very interesting tidbit about me that you guys should reach out to him. I'm not going to give you the info because I'm not the expert on it. I'm just going to say that your life insurance probably could be a lot cheaper, even if you like just signed up in December because of things that have changed. And I'm not the expert at it, but David knows stuff and you should at least ask him about it. Something's changed in the market that made all, the, I guess, most or all of the policies very, a lot substantially yes. so so you at least want to talk to him about that even if he's not the guy you go through at least get some info he could give you some resources point you in the right direction if you have someone you're loyal to already maybe ask that person for the information but i was pretty um intrigued to hear that information welcome dwight how are you embarrassed <laughs> dwight how many Hi. videos have you made now that you want to erase <laughs> Uh, that was my second draft. I deleted the first one because I, I tried to take it outside just because it was so beautiful out earlier. And uh, I actually uh, lost the internet signal. So uh. I chopped it up in the middle and I wasn't going to post that. And So I made a second one because of that. And uh, that's what you all saw. Oh, well, and then Dwight's already trying to take his second one down. I, I asked him to please leave it up for one day because... I always get this, Dwight. When I force people to do these videos, they a lot. Most people want to take them down right away, and I say, please just leave it up for one day. And what they find is by leaving it up for one day, they're actually getting comments of people encouraging them or asking them questions or like it really. Even when we mess up, just like I shared the other day, we're human, right? It makes people more connected to you. Yeah, Phyllis, go ahead. Can we crop them? If you have software to do so, yes. <laughs> Next time, straighten out my shirt, right? <laughs> it well, is you mean, fine. You mean you can cut out sections of the video? You can't actually crop the screen, can you? You can do both if you have the right software. Yes. I just did mind white, and I'm obsessed with the fact that I had this big wrinkle in the front of my shirt. But guys, guess what? That video you guys just created is the hardest one you'll ever have to create because it was your first, <sighs> or maybe your first now. So. Just create a new one tomorrow and don't have a wrinkle in your shirt. Don't say so many ums. Whatever you felt like you did wrong today, just get better at it tomorrow. Keep going. Okay. If you do enough research on me, you'll find some videos where I did videos when I did not really know my stuff, right? Like I tried and you're like, what is wrong with Barbara? If you do enough research, you can find those things. Now I'm not going to post them, but I'll tell you they are out there. <laughs> And same thing with even the big euros, gurus. If you do enough mm -hmm. research, you can even find those kind of videos on Tony Robbins. Okay, like when they didn't quite know everything. Okay, somebody's got music playing. Okay, they hey. stopped it, whoever it was. Um, so, hey, Barbara. Barbara, yeah. can I ask you a question? Sorry. Yes. I don't think I, I don't, I don't know what you guys are saying. Like, what are the videos oh. on? Thank you, Janice. So when you when we're done with this call, there are replays of all the calls we've done before this because this is a daily training. Yesterday's training was on Facebook Live. So they all did Facebook Lives in the past 24 hours. Um, and many of them, it was their first time ever doing a live. So you'll watch, you could watch the training. It is, it, it's posted in the group under the units tab. And after you watch the training, it gives you that assignment to do a Facebook live. And everybody starts off bad. You guys, we all do. I started off bad. Tony Robbins started off bad. Gary Vee started off bad. Anybody who you followed, they started bad. Okay. Yes, Dwight. Um, I uh, dialed into this Zoom call. This is like a side note. I dialed into the Zoom call just by using the number at the top of the screen right now. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to actually go. I've been going to look for Facebook for me to post a link to join the Zoom call. Mm -hmm. With all the new um, units getting added, it's getting harder to find. Yes. So I realized I could dial this number in from Zoom and just go straight to this call. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that, Dwight. But let me also add that the Zoom link is always at the top of the announcements tab. So if it ever gets lost, just go to announcements and it's the very first post in the announcements. Just so everybody knows. Okay, so we still have a little bit of time left. You guys, we have eight people on the call. If we get one more person, we'll be like the Brady Bunch. 
<laughs> is everybody else viewing it gallery style like that? Like, I'm super excited for one more person to get on here. <laughs> KJ said she was doing it, but I don't know where she, what she's doing. <gasps> oh, there we got it. Okay. Rick, All right. Rick just joined. Uh, Rick, you just made our ninth person on the call, which makes us a complete Brady Bunch. And if you are ready to talk, tell us who you are and what you do. Rick, can you hear me? Oh, there. Hi, Rick. Uh, are you ready to tell us who you are and what you do? Rick, I think you muted yourself. Hold on, you're mute. Rick, you're acting like it Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. All right, Rick, tell us about easy you. Easy now, easy, <laughs> easy. There he is. Hey. Yeah, see if I can get some light in here. All right. Uh, okay, I'm in the dark. I'm in the dark ages. Right. Am I supposed to be talking right now? Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, whenever you're ready, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, Rick Oster from Crown Point. I do, uh, well, I do a lot of stuff. So mainly, uh, I do uh, motivational, inspirational speaking to people who, uh, it's really different topics from, uh, you know, losing weight to, uh, customer service. So, uh, been in business, uh, since 2001. So I can, uh, you know, my main, my main thing is embroider, custom embroidery, screen printing, promotional items, that kind of stuff. So, but uh, a lot lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, motivational, inspirational speaking to people about, you know, different things. So, fantastic. Thank you, Rick, for sharing. Yep. And so we have nine people on here, and set one, two, three, four, Ooh. five, six of you. Bless you, Dwight. Six of you did your videos. Uh, David, I know you had a good reason for not doing yours yet. He has to check with compliance on what he can and can't do because of his industry. And Janice is brand new. She just joined the group. And so if we could all welcome Janice. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, Janice. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. So, um, so as we are moving forward, I'm going to wait until two o'clock to announce the winner of the contest. But I will tell you that the winner of the contest is currently on our call. So it could be any one of you. <laughs> Drum roll. And, and I will also tell you guys that if I had to pick a second place, it was a tie between like four people. Oh my God. So it's a good thing I did not have to pick a second place. <laughs> but the first place one was pretty, um, uh, pretty clear to me after watching all the videos. And, and I have feedback for all of you, but I'm not going to have time to share the feedback on this call because it would take too long. So if you would like the feedback I have for you regarding your video, then reach out to me and schedule a Zoom call or something like that. And I'll be happy to give you your specific feedback for your video. Because if I talked about all of them right now, it'd take me at least a half hour. <laughs> KJ, welcome. Hi. KJ, Hi. Can, can you share with us who you are and what you do? I'm KJ and I sell Mary Kay. She's a woman of very few words. <laughs> yes. yes, I am. Thank you, KJ. I also hear you're planning to do a Zoom Mary Kay party for Miranda here soon. Yes. Good, good. All right, so you guys, we have about three minutes left, so I'm going to do a little bit of a poll here. By a show of your physical hands, those of you who are on, um, uh, who's on video, if you're not on video, maybe just raise your hand if you know how to do that, like on, click the raise your hand button. So now we're all quarantined, right? Everyone's at home, stuck at home. Uh, if you are loving this quarantine, raise your hand for me. I'm going to kind of see where everyone is. Okay, we got about half. All right, if you are already bored out of your mind and you're not so excited about the quarantine, raise your hand. Okay, look at Dwight, you raised your hand on both of those. <laughs> um, okay, and then Deb Debbie, I see that you raised your hand as well. Uh, Dave and Rick, I didn't see either of you raise your hand, so I'm going to need you to verbally tell me your thoughts on this. <laughs> and don't make well, it political. Where I'm at on it is I'm starting to like it more, 
because of the fact that I'm getting a lot of things done that I otherwise wouldn't get done. So I like it. So I'd say I'm 50-50, but I'm going more towards enjoying it because I'm with you guys and I'm getting a lot of these productive things done. I'm usually an out and about person. So, you know, I'm making those adjustments, but it's giving me the focus, the discipline, and the ability to focus in on a lot of these good things. So I would say it's more on the upswing now. Perfect. I'm with you. Yeah, good, good. How about you, Rick? Oh, you know. Oh, you muted again. There's light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> just gotta. Yeah, good. Keep going forward. Good, good. Awesome. Well, I'm loving it because um, my kids and my husband are stuck with me all day. And, you know, I love that because that's who I am. <laughs> and they, they get their time away from me. Like, they get their time in their rooms and stuff. Isaac doesn't, though. I sometimes, I'm like, why are you not right by me? Come right by me. <laughs> uh, but he's very sweet about it. He's he, he gets as close as he can without me being too That's good. Noxious. <laughs> So, all right, we are at 159. Jeannie, welcome. Hi, Jeannie. There you are. Hi, Jeannie. Um, we are about to start in less than one minute. Do you want to tell us who you are and what you do before we start? Who I am and what I do? Is that what you said? I'm sorry. We've got about 30 seconds. Jeannie Perry. I am a tax and accountant, tax preparer and accountant. So I help people with their financial reports and tax returns. Nice. And as you guys know, right now, it's the season for that. Even though there's been an extension, it's the season for that. If you need help, use the gal. All right. So we had a contest. I believe that most people had fun, even if they don't want to admit that they had fun. I believe that most of you had fun. And we do have a winner. And um, I'm going to just share a few things. Um, actually, I'm, I'll only share, okay, so I, here's what I'm going to do. The person who won had, had all of the following qualities. It was good video quality as far as we could see very well. It wasn't blurry or pixelated. And what we were looking at was an appealing view. The sound was good. There wasn't in and out. It, uh, there wasn't a lot of um, distractions. The um, incorporated a few different topics. Now, one thing I will say about this video is that it could have been a lot shorter. <laughs> and in fact, it could have been two or three different videos. <laughs> but, um, but the winner for this today's contest, and the content was awesome. So the winner for today's contest was Marie Perez. Yay! Marie, what you win is a lapel mic. So now your sound quality is going to be even better than it already is. Cool. Um, Marie, do you have an iPhone or an Android? I have an Android. Okay, perfect then. So then that is all you get. If you had an iPhone, I had a second thing for you. Oh, you were going to give me a phone? No. <laughs> I was going to give you the converter, but you don't need the converter because you have an Android. So I'm going to need you to send me. Well, I, I have your address, but if you could just send it to me anyway so that I have it up to, um, just so I have it easy to find. And I'm going to send that in the mail to you. And then you're Congrats. 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 Marie. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. Congratulations. But, I, but I do want to say that each and every one of you who did a video did an awesome job. I'm they super proud of you. And I said earlier, I don't know how many people were on the call when I said this, but if I had to pick a second place, it was a tie between about four of you. So you guys all did really good. Okay. And you should be very proud of yourself. It only gets easier from here. So don't stop doing video, keep doing video. In fact, we'll talk more about video in later sessions as well, but do video, okay? All right, so today's training, give me one moment. I see, the tra hi Tracy, how are you? I see that you just stopped on, I'm just gonna mark you. You guys know that I'm a big nerd, I've got attendance here, so I just wanna mark that Tracy is here. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I got a call right before. <laughs> that is okay. We understand. I was trying to find the link and then got a call and I was like, should I take it? And I'm glad I did because it was a business opportunity. Very good. All right. So today we're going to go into email marketing. 
again by a show of physical hands here it, or if you're on an i if you're on a phone just raise your hand but by a show of hands how many people are already using email marketing for your business raise your hand if so okay we have wow one person okay um <laughs> great job to you kj everybody else that's okay if you haven't started yet guess when is the best time to start now you guessed it right now everybody's stuck at home now here's the thing though people are being bombarded with emails so you have to give value in your email stuff that people actually want to open because otherwise you just get lost in the herd of everybody else's emails. so we're going to, we're going to talk about that today so what email marketing is is where you, i'm just going to give a quick description in case somebody doesn't know it's where you're using an email platform to be able to communicate with people who want to hear from you now if this is different from your gmail or yahoo account okay you could definitely send emails to people through those accounts but in what we're talking about today it is more of like a uh template image that is sent out or a template uh email that is sent out to multiple people at once depending on how big your list is if your list is 10 people it goes to 10 people if your list is a thousand people it goes to a thousand people with just the click of one button you guys all right, and, and you can make it look pretty if you want. Um, nowadays, it's actually better not to make it look pretty, so don't spend so much time trying to make it look pretty. The, the email systems pick up things that are not, that don't include a lot of emails and, and, or a lot of images and colors now so don't try to make it look fancy if that's what stopped you in the past now you have no excuses because it's mostly just plain text uh welcome tim we are just jumping into the training Hi, Tim. Uh, so so with email marketing you can utilize this to capture people who maybe you wouldn't have been able to capture before for instance when you guys joined this group you became part of one of my email lists um and actually in my email list i think i call it covid is the name of the list <laughs> but that's not what you guys see uh but you guys became part of one of my email lists because you showed interest in something that i'm doing right now you the way that you add people to your list is number one you can something like this where you offer something and in order to be part of the program they they give you their email address and then they join and or you could do a what's called an IFO or an irresistible free offer. You guys have seen those before where you create an ebook or there's a video series. I mean, you guys probably <laughs> subscribed to other people's already. And so in our mastermind group, actually, there's a few people in this group that are on this call even that are part of the mastermind group. We actually walked our people through creating their IFOs and you guys, a lot of times it's taking a step back to be like, okay, well, who is this for? A lot of times we just want to create what we think is the best irresistible free offer, but then we're marketing it to people who don't even have an interest in that. So you have to know who your avatar is, who your target is, and then what they want so that you know what to create for your IFO. Now, today's homework is not going to ask you to create an IFO. That's a bonus though, if you do. Um, so <laughs> yeah, if, if you already have one, that's even greater, but if you don't, I, I can, um, give you a few steps on that to do so. But the, another way to get people on your list, you guys, is to simply ask them. You can actually put a post out, um, that says, Hey, I'm starting a new email marketing campaign. This is the type of stuff I'm going to send. Right. So let people know what you'll be sending because that's what makes them subscribe or not. So for me, I might say I'll be sending marketing tips three days a week or every week or every day, whatever it is. I'll be sending marketing tips to my list. Who wants on that list? Right. So you tell what you're going to send. Um, Marie, in your case, for your season, season your life. I know that's not your primary business, but for that business, you could say I'm going to I'm going to be sharing monthly healthy recipes. Who wants on that list? Right, so you just simply ask, right? Look, Dwight already raised his hand. He wants on that list. So, um, and if nobody responds, you guys, maybe you're offering the wrong things or maybe you're being too vague. You don't wanna just say, I'm gonna put out tips or I'm gonna send you my updates. That doesn't sound very exciting. Most people, are, they're already getting tips and updates from a hundred other people, 
right? So mm -hmm. tell them specifically what's going to be shared from what you're doing. Just ask them. You also can use your phone to message people and say, hey, I'm starting an email list. I'd love for you to be on it. Is it okay if I add you to it? Um, because we, ha we do have to legally ask people to be on our list, right? If somebody's bought a, so a few different ways that people can go on your list without having to verbally say, hey, can, you, can I put you on my list? Is if they buy from you, so if they pay you, if they give you an email for a registration of an event, right? So these are some of the ways that you can get people on your email list without specifically saying, I'd like to put you on my email list. Most of them typically know that they'll be on your email list. And most of them probably want to be on your email list if they're participating in one of your events or if they're one of your clients. But if, if not, you need to verbally, you need to either ask them or get them to sign up on a form. So you could use a form that people can sign up on themselves and then you don't necessarily have to ask them. That is them opting in themselves. Okay, so I know that is a whole lot of information. Before I go to the next step of the training, does anyone have questions yet? I have yes, a question. Uh, what platform you used? What's that? I asked what platform you use. Do you use Constant Contact or anything in particular? Uh, Dave, that's a great question. I use MailChimp and that's going to be the next part of the training. Sorry, and Barbara. Phyllis, I, cut yeah. in, I cut in again. No, that's thanks. okay. Phyllis, were you the one asking a question? Yeah. Uh, my question is, when I go into my email every day or so on, and over in the tab that says Promotions, click on and then I want to check the box and delete them all at once and there's always one or two at the top that you have to look at before you can delete them they must pay big bucks for that or something yes those are sponsored okay and they're annoying. Those are also not the types of emails we're talking about here either but that was a good question all right okay. any other questions Dwight um you said male chimp like a chimpanzee yes okay um my, basically, I I want to know about this because uh, I didn't know that this was. I probably could have found it in Facebook, but uh, email marketing is not going to be a strong suit for me, mainly because I don't check emails. I don't. I mean, <laughs> well, you don't need to check emails to send emails. Well, I, I don't. I don't send them. <laughs> like That's I only send them if somebody requires me to give them like a PDF or actual paperwork involved with a job. Mm -hmm. I'm submitting something to the township or things like that, then I'll send emails with a file attached to them. But if it's right. not necessary for the, I mean, this, my job is a little different than what you have to do, you know, so. Well, let me just share with you, no matter what industry you're in, you should be utilizing email marketing because here's the fact of the matter. People who aren't doing business with you right now may want to in the future. They may know somebody who wants to, and you need to be connecting with them somehow, whether that's email marketing, video marketing, social media marketing, uh, direct mail marketing, however it is, you've got to be out in front of these people so that when they do need help, they remember that you exist. If you only reach out to people when they need something, you're going to be too late. Right. Okay. Barbara, I also wanted to mention to him too, you know, if you're planning on using just Facebook alone, the thing is Facebook, you don't own Facebook and uh -huh. Facebook can shut you down at any time. And if they shut you down and you have only one way of communicating with your customers, you're out of business. So you really need to have several different ways, like email and Facebook. Yep. So yeah, good point. Very good point. Yeah. So having the diversified marketing strategies. Thank you for sharing that, Tracy. And so again, it may not be something that you do all the time, but it should be somehow in your toolbox. Right. Even if you only send an email once a month. Now people ask, what? Well, what would I send in an email? Well, that's a great question. You send things that give value. Okay. This is not a sales email. This is a giving value, an education email. Similar to what I'm doing with you guys. In fact, all of the training I give you guys is going to be transcribed and turned into email marketing. Okay, like why not repurpose your content? The videos that you guys did today on Facebook Live, you can repurpose those to blogs. You could repurpose those to emails. You could repurpose those to audios for podcasts. You could repurpose so much of the content that you are already creating and, and, and you should as many chances as you can. 
Okay, so so education, inspiration, encouragement. Um, sometimes you share stories, just things that get people interested in reading what you have to offer. Don't make it salesy though. Email marketing is not meant to be salesy. Phyllis, I think you had your hand. I, I did. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm not real techie here, but um, I was able to sh share it with this group, and I shared it with Green Cow on the share, but I couldn't actually find the link. Okay. On it. Okay, that's okay. If you were able to share it, that that's all you needed to know. Oh no, we're growing so much. Do you guys see us? Like, wait, or did we lose? I don't know what just happened. Oh, we lost. Did we lose someone? I think we lost someone. Somebody okay. had to pray for somebody. Marie's yeah. grandson has a hundred and four fever. This is not oh. good. Oh. oh no. So she's going to the ER. Okay. All right. And Angela well, joined us. For those, hi Angela, for those of you who pray, uh, please keep Marie's grandson in your prayer. I didn't notice that before she jumped off. Okay, um, and actually I wanna write Angela down right here cause I don't have time to look for her on the thing, but I keep attending. So like, and Tim, Tim, I, I don't know if I said hi to you. Um, Dave? Whenever you guys see Dave put the monkey in his chair, Dude, that means he's, he's using the restroom. <laughs> Um, so I've got to get a monkey to put in my chair. All right, you guys, <laughs> let's move on to the next part. In a moment, I'm going to show you MailChimp on my screen. I'm going to show you how to use it. That's the program I use. There are many other programs that you guys could use. There's Constant Contact, there's Aweber. There's a whole number of them. I prefer MailChimp for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was it was the easiest and cheapest one to use when I first started my business like 10 years ago. And um, most people who are recommending Constant Contact or Aweber, they're doing it because they're making affiliate income on it. And MailChimp, I don't know if they actually have affiliate income or not, but um, I've never seen it all the time I've been on it. So I believe when people recommend something that doesn't have an affiliate, they're probably more genuine. Doesn't mean that it's not great if there's an affiliate uh, link. I use a lot of affiliate links myself and I support a lot of them. Um, I just, I've tried both of those and they didn't do nearly what I needed them to, MailChimp did do. That's why I chose MailChimp about 10 years ago. I've used the other ones for clients since then. And I mean, it's gotten a little better, but I still prefer MailChimp. Um, so if someone asks me my opinion, I say mine is MailChimp, but again, that's just my opinion. And, and the other reason is I got into MailChimp at their beta stage, which means I have free everything, um, things that other people have to pay to upgrade, mine's free for life because I got in at their beta stage. So it doesn't make sense for me to switch to a different platform. <laughs> So that was a long time ago, though. That doesn't exist anymore. But so those are my opinions on why I think mine are better. Um, and then, yes, MailChimp is free up to so many contacts. And I, that's how most of them are. Any platform you choose, I think that they all have like a free option. And then, or at least a free trial. And then you pay for as your list grows. Okay. And then do you recommend using Kajabi, which has a CRM? If what you're doing, uh, like if you're doing training and stuff, Tracy asked if I recommend Kajabi, which is like a membership and training uh, course type of thing. Yeah, if you're already using Kajabi and you have the option to be able to send out the emails and do your CRM, it makes sense to do it all in one program, especially at the cost of what that is. So Kajabi, I, last I known, I think it was like close to $200 a month. I don't know what it is right now, but if you're paying that amount, you should utilize everything you can in that program. Okay. Um, and then, so it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to use a third, a different party, a different system. If what you're already paying for has the option to do so. Um, let's see. And then I want to talk about CRM real fast because I know a few people have mentioned CRM and one person had asked me specifically, what is a CRM when I posted about it, um, about this class. So a CRM stands for uh, customer relationship management, or um, sometimes it's client relations management, all the same thing, just different word you use. And it basically is a way to keep track of prospects, clients, um, leads, past clients, any of those things, uh, relationships that you're building. It's a way for you to keep track of those people in one system. Some some people use their email marketing campaign as their CRM. 
I don't. Um, and it, again, it depends on which one you're using, that if it makes sense or not. And the reason why I don't use, the reason I don't use that as my CRM is because it's limited on what information it could capture. The CRM that I use is HubSpot. And there is a free version of HubSpot for CRM and it's free for life no matter how large your list is. But it lets me capture like so many things, including like um, number of people that work at the company and the revenue of the company and um, the people's birthdays, their anniversaries, their kids' names. Like I'm able to capture all of that in this um, in this particular program. I can't do that in MailChimp or in Aweber or any of that stuff. So that's why I prefer using HubSpot and using a third party. Let's see, is anyone using CRM right now? Great question, Rick. So by a show of hands, if you're already using a CRM system, let's just wave your hand. Okay, Dave, Dave, which one do you use? Uh, I think it was one that you had mentioned, less annoying, less yep. annoying. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. So less annoying CRM, that is a good one, definitely. That one is $10 a month, I believe, unless it's gone yep, up. So $10, right, it's a it's 10 bucks a month. Um, and it is a good system. So that is a great one. Thanks for sharing that, Dave. Uh, anybody else, nobody else raised their hand for that. So, so there are, again, just like email systems, there are lots of other CRMs you could use too. So there's lots of email platforms. There's lots of CRMs. You've got to find the one that works for you. If you're like, listen, I only want to capture the pe people's email addresses, then you could technically use your email marketing platform as your CRM. I don't recommend only capturing that. I recommend capturing as much as you can. I send birthday cards and anniversary cards to my people because I capture their email or their birthdays. And I also get their physical email or their physical mailing address. I have people reach out to me and be like, first of all, how did you know it was my birthday? And secondly, how did you get my address? <laughs> And I just like jokingly, like they're not upset about it. They're just genuinely interested. Like, how did you do this? I want to do it. And it does take a little bit of research and it does take time, but people appreciate it. I can't tell you how many times I get messages from people saying, that was so thoughtful of you to send me a card and this brightened my day. And I'm so glad you did this. So just little things, um, and in, in a moment, I'm going to go into my CRM to show you guys how to use it. Um, and then you could just decide for yourself if it's something you want to keep up with or not. Dwight. Um, is there a way to uh, make your information not known? Like I know quite a few people that would not want somebody else to know their physical mailing address if they were engaging with them in business just because of their own um, their own beliefs about privacy and things like that. And they might even find it intrusive, you know, and, and I know actually quite a few people like that. Not that that's bad. You know, I just, that's their prerogative. I'm not necessarily that way, but is there a way to protect your information from it being captured? There is. You have to go to a lot of efforts to do that. And I think the people who are serious about it, like what you're saying, are probably the ones that do go through every effort to do so. But nowadays that everything's available online, you could pretty much find anything you want about someone for free and pretty easily. Now, of course, there are some people that it's impossible to find them. They are like a ghost online. But I do pretty well finding the information I need and I never have to pay for it. I just have to put my time in. Okay. And actually, I don't have that as one of the training things for this, but if that's something someone's interested in, then just let me know and maybe I'll do a training sometime on it. But it isn't include, it's not something I put on the list for the 30 days. Okay, so moving on then, let's see. Okay, another question. How long should an email be? Well, it shouldn't be too long because people are busy. Right. Um, and the purpose of an email is to usually stay just in contact with them or to take them somewhere else. So maybe you uh, maybe you're having an event and you post a, um, something on like an email you send them and you're like, hey, I'm doing this or whatever. And now I only recommend uh, the first several emails you're going to send are going to be just giving value. You're not going to print, prevent, promote events or sales or anything like that for like at least the first 10 because you want people to know that you're not trying to sell them. Of course, at some point you're going to send them sales emails because that's why they're on your list. But the first 10 are critical for you to make sure you're building relationship with them and giving them value. Okay. And um, 
I could kind of walk through some of mine. I didn't put that on my list, but I, if we have time, I'll walk through some of what my first emails look like for people. So I would say one to two paragraphs is the answer to how long it should be. One to two paragraphs. How many people can write one to two paragraphs? All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One to two paragraphs. It does not have to be as long as a blog. It does not need to be like an article. It does not need to be a book. Oh, please don't make it a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people don't have time to sit there and read all day long, but make sure it's something of value. Right now, while coronavirus is scaring everybody, your email could be as simple as, it doesn't have to have any words, it could be a picture that just says, hey, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe, right? You can send just a picture in the email. So just make sure that you're keeping with what's going on in the world. Uh, should you attach a video, if so, how long? Definitely not at the beginning because people, when they see attachments, if this is a new person they're following, they might be like, is this legit? Once you've built a relationship, you can attach videos. Um, and it doesn't really matter the length because what you would do is if, if, if let's say I wanted to direct somebody to this video, the email marketing training video, and I send an email saying, hey, you know, right now coronavirus has everyone stuck inside, great time to do email, but you want your email to stand out from everybody else's. So I did a training on email marketing and why you should be using it and how you should be using it, and here's the link to it if you're interested. So if someone clicks on that link, that means they're interested in the text that you had before the video, right? So you put text, maybe a paragraph, and you tell people what the link is, if they click on it, they're interested. And so the length isn't going to be as important for that particular topic. However, you should try to keep most of your videos less than 10 minutes unless it's a community of people that are paying for what you're offering. Okay? Um, the next thing is how often should you send emails? This, there's not a right or wrong answer for this. There are many people who send emails just once a month and that's fine. Some people do once a week. Some people do daily or three times a week. You have to find what works for you and what works for your audience. Now, keep in mind that the more frequent that you send emails, the more that people are seeing your name. So even if they don't open your email, they're seeing your name in their inbox, right? Which means you, you're still top of mind when they need what you have to offer. But it also means that the more you send, they may not open as many because they're like, oh, well, she sends me emails every day. She sends me what They might actually get too overwhelmed with keeping up with your emails. So make sure that if you're giving, like for me, I give homework. You believe that, guys? I give homework in my emails. <laughs> so it would not make sense for me to do it every day. I mean, you guys have been doing well with your homework assignments, but I typically leave a two week, a one to two week time period between mine because I'm asking people to do homework. And in my business training emails, th the homework is not necessarily quick, easy stuff. It's like, go build your funnel. Here's how to build your funnel. This is gonna take you four or five days to figure out. Then you're gonna need a call with me. <laughs> And then it's going to take you two or three days to edit what I told you to edit, right? Like it's not very simple stuff. And so it wouldn't make sense for me to put this out daily and sometimes even weekly. And so knowing who your audience is, what you're sending and how much time they need to digest that information is going to be important to the answer to your question of how often should I send? All right. David says, um, oh wait, Rick said, Rick says two paragraphs is too long. Remember, it's not a sales pitch. Get to your point. Into that, that's correct. Um, so, um, Rick, with the email, you're right. You do want to get to the point real quickly, but people do like stories. People like to know what who you are as a human. So, a lot of people in their emails will share, um, like maybe their first paragraph is something about what's going on in their life. They make it personal, and then they go into this is why I'm emailing. Um, David, with MailChimp or HubSpot, can you see if they opened your email? Yes, with MailChimp you can, and with any any of the email platforms that you use, you're going to be able to see if they opened your email and if they clicked on anything in the email, if there's links. And with HubSpot, you can if you connect it to your Gmail, or you connect it to Gmail and then you connect Gmail to Streak or one of the other options there are lots of options of free free ways that you can see if someone opened your email mine i use streak s-t-r-e-a-k 
All right. And then, okay. So moving on, thank you guys for all posting that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share my screen. Does it, before I share my screen, does anyone else have any questions? I just answered all in the chat, but does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen now, and then I, I will show you a few things. Now, what I'm going to show you in MailChimp um, is me. So in MailChimp, what I will show you in MailChimp is going to be very similar to any other any other program that you use. So if you're using AWeber or Constant Contact, any of this, it's going to be very similar to what I'm showing. The buttons just might look different or might be located somewhere else, but you'll get the concept. All right, so when you are in your MailChimp or whatever your program is, and you go to, well, I'm, I'm going to go to my audience because I'm the audience is your, your list of lists, right? All the lists that you have. And I'm going to show you guys how to add into the list. So in mine, I just created this one uh, specifically last night to show you guys this. I created the list named Fuse Marketing and Media. Um, I was going to name it what this class is, but I wanted to show you guys how to tag things, so I didn't name it this. So what I'll do over here on the right, I'm going to manage audience, and I am going to um, add subscriber. Oh, actually, no, let me do import. I'm going uh -huh. to use them because I have them, I could copy and paste them. Um, oh, right. Import contacts. And it's going to ask which of these I want to do. If you guys have them in like an Excel file, you can transfer it to um, S CSV and upload the file itself, or you can just copy and paste the Excel file. What I'm going to do is copy and paste also from, mine's in Google Drive, but it's very similar to Excel. So I'm going to choose copy and paste. Hold on, I need to move, I need to move this up. There we go. Down at the bottom right is continue. <sighs> These things do not automatically save. So make sure that if you're in the middle of something, you save it before you get out of it. So I will come up here to this tab that I'm opening up right now is specific to this 30 days training. I've already blacked out everyone's email addresses so that you guys don't technically see them right here. That's to protect your privacy. And when I add them into MailChimp, I will probably, um, stops sharing my screen for just a moment so that I still protect people's privacy. So what I will do is I will paste them in here, which is what I'm going to do real fast. Um, and I need to check the, I understand that my billing plan may be automatically upgraded. If you have a free version and you include people in here that takes you over the limit of, like say you have 500 is the number for free. I don't know what it actually is, but I'm just throwing it out there. And this makes your list go to like 510. It will automatically charge you for what you're planning. Okay, so I'm going to paste and continue to match. And then I'm going to stop my share for just a moment. And I'm going to come over here. Give me just a sec, guys. Okay, there's not an easy way to show you how to do that. But basically the next step is asking to match the fields. So it's saying, is this a person's first name? Is this their last name? Is this their email? And you basically say, yes, 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 right? Um, let's see, edit, first name, save, then I'm gonna go last name, save, and then email address, save, and then, I'm gonna hit the continue to organize button and then I will share my screen again with you guys. All right, so in just a moment, you will see my screen once more. Uh, can someone tell me when you see my screen? Not yet. Okay. No. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now that I've put all those contacts into my list, right here is where I can create the tag, right? So, so I could have like every event I do, I could put everybody into this main fuse marketing and media list, but I could separate them based on the event name, right? So this one, um, I'm going to name it a, a new tag. 
and I'm just gonna put, this is, I keep calling this my COVID-19 training. It's just an easy, it's a lot shorter than the 30 virtual marketing ideas, blah, 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 right? And so I gave everybody this tag, which tells me that they were part of my 30 day program. Okay, now choose the status of these contacts. It automatically chooses subscribed, and that's what you I should. Wash my hands now, Barbara. What's that? I said I gotta go wash my hands. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, and then what it will ask you next is it will make sure that you everything is done properly. So you imported. Oh. I'm importing three columns: first name, last name, email. I've applied a tag to it, and the status is subscribed. So then I hit import. And then it will show me I added 51 contacts to this list. All right, now let's say I want to share this list for somebody else to be part of it. This, per, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do it this particular way because this list, the people that are on this list are part of the group. So if I want to put them in the list, they first become part of the group. But let's say that this is something that you're offering, um, uh free tips or a free call or whatever it is you're wh whatever you're giving them and you you want to be able to invite them to your list so what you would do is when you click over here on manage audience and then you go to sign up forms you guys it is super super simple all you have to do is on the sign up form it is pretty much done for you it is this the sign up form? So verify your access to the email address. Okay, so I have to wait until I verify because, like I said, I just sent I just set this up last night for you guys. I have not verified my domain yet, but oh, let me go to one of my other lists. Let me go here to my roadmap list. Okay, so on this one, if I want to add people, the sign up forms is right here in the top up here. So when I click on it. You guys, it's super simple. This one where it says form builder, the very first one, you hit select. Mm -hmm. And it will show you what the form looks like, which is almost exactly what you need. It's usually just email address, first name, last name. Um, now you'll notice this address. I, I don't know how good you can see it, but <clears throat> behind it, it shows that it's hidden. Right, like, <clears throat> which means it, it's not actually showing up on here. It's just showing on here, but when someone goes to subscribe, it does not show up. The only mm -hmm. things that show up is email address, first name, last name. Mm -hmm. So this link right up here at the top, all I do is I select this, I copy it, I could come over here and a new tab, paste it. This tab, that link that I just copy and pasted, I can give that to people or I could post on my Facebook that says something like, hey, I'm starting this new list. This is what I'll be sharing. Who wants to be on it? The person fills this out themselves, email, first name, last name. They hit subscribe. They're automatically added to my email. So they will be getting the emails that I send. Any questions yet? Okay, so let's move on to the next part. I have a quick question, Go ahead. Barbara. Um, so for this, if you wanted to set up a bi-monthly, so two-week email, you could name it that instead of the roadmap, mm -hmm. and then send this out to people, or is it better to make that contact via a text or phone call or on Facebook messaging? to more explain what you're doing, then send them this? Um, it could be either one, depending on a lot of things, depending on what the content is, what your reputation is, all that good stuff. So like for me, for instance, when I, if I were to put this on my Facebook page, people would subscribe, right? Like um, I would need to give them a little bit of information about what I'm sending, but there, I have a pretty, I'm very blessed with a good following of people who are like, hey, if Barbara's offering it, I want it. Right. But at the same time, and, and Kim, I could imagine you're probably the same way. Like you're, you're one of those connectors and um, you share so much, you give so much that if you said, Hey, I'm starting this, I can imagine you would be very um, abundantly blessed with subscribers. But yes, it's also a good idea to explain things better um, as much as you can uh, without explaining yourself away. Sometimes we talk ourselves out of having someone on our list, right. Or buying our product. And so, yeah, either way would be fine. You just need to, and then also how much you know the person too, I think. 
So obviously a new person, if I just connect with a new person, I wouldn't expect them to just sign up for my list with very little info. I would expect to build the relationship first. But in my, um, so in my sales process, I, I asked that I asked to add them to my email list. I believe on the second conversation with them where like I actually have that is this is what I, you know, my strategy, I told you guys be strategic with everything you do. So the first call is literally just getting to know them, finding out who they are, what they're, what they do for fun, what their goals are. And then the second one is, okay, now, now that I know these things about you, here's some resources that can help you, even if they're not me. And then I say, Hey, would you like me to add you to my email list so that when I know of other things, or if I have more tips to go out or something that you'll make sure that you get them. People are always like, yes. And now here's the thing. When you directly ask people, it's hard for them to say no to you. Even if they don't want to be on your list, if you're asking them like in a Zoom meeting or in a face-to-face -face meeting, they're less likely to say no. Um, but you also want to make sure that the people on your list are people who are actually going to open your emails and engage because it's better to have a high quality list than a high quantity list. What good is it if you have a million people if only two people open it? Right. So in, in order to do that, you want to make sure you're putting out valuable content. All right. Um, let's see. I don't have my chat opened right now, so I don't know if uh, Tim, are you raising your hand? Yes. Okay. How did you go from what's shown on the screen? Because before it also included like the home address and city and state. So so even though it showed the home address, it, it let me go back to that screen. It, if you look real closely, it actually says hidden behind it. See this blue box, okay. which means that if I want this to show up, I need to click on it. And then over here on the right, I can click visible. I got you. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Good question. I'm going to look, see if I have any other questions. If you have a question, raise your hand physically so I can see you. I'm looking at all the pictures right now all the videos. Okay, good. Everyone looks good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on. Now here is my favorite part of this, you guys, what I love the most about MailChimp. Now I will say that I believe that this next thing I'm about to show you is a paid version of MailChimp. I don't pay for it. Like I said, because I have the beta version that everything is free for me. But um, if I go to, let's go to my campaigns. But it's my favorite, favorite part. And I honestly, I don't know the cost of it because like I said, I don't pay for it, but I'm pretty sure it is an upgrade. But if I go to my campaigns and I see my Fuse roadmap and I come here, so this was the limited discount on the social media workshop. Welcome, okay, right here. So this is what I wanna show you. Let me come down a little bit. So my welcome message, I want you to notice the difference between my welcome message and my April 25th meeting information. Okay, so this meeting information was talking probably about a class I was having. I don't know. That was 2014. I don't remember what that might have been. But this welcome message, do you see how right underneath it, there's this like arrows that are circle and there's not down here? The difference between this is that uh, that circle thing shows that this is a... Um, Oh, why am I missing out on the word right now? Uh, basically, it, it's a evergreen, an evergreen campaign, which means if Angela signs up for it today and Jeannie signs up for it in six weeks and then Tracy signs up for it in three years, their emails will look the same as far as the first message they get is going to be on the first day. This is the message. Two days later, this is the message. Right. So the messages that you put into this campaign needs to be um, it, it can't be timely stuff like you can't talk about events that you're doing. It has to be things that no matter when they open it, it's still relevant. OK, so I'm going to I'm, I'm going to open this up and show you guys some of it. OK, so if I go, I got to go. I need to go to edit in order to view what's in here. So I will edit it and it will make me pause it. So up here at the top, in order for me to edit anything, I have to pause it. However, actually, I don't think I need to pause it to do what I'm going to do for you guys because I don't need to edit to show you. So on the first thing here, if this one right here, your requested roadmap to entrepreneurial success is enclosed. How people get on this list is I do, uh, I was doing speaking events to where I was talking about my roadmap to entrepreneurial success. I was sharing with people what my roadmap looked like. And then at the end, I said, and of course, in my PowerPoint presentation that was behind me during my speech, 
I was saying, I was showing the roadmap, right? Like the physical image of the roadmap. And at the end of my presentation, I said, Hey, if you guys want a free copy of this roadmap, even if you don't do business with me, you just want a copy of the roadmap to do it yourself, just send, uh, fill out this form or go to this or wh however I was doing it. And, and you could get a free copy of the roadmap. So people give me their email address. And I think it was on the sign in sheet that they had to put their email address and then they got on this roadmap uh, list. And so this first one, you'll see the trigger is that they immediately get this email, this first email after they've subscribed, after their email goes in here. And let me see if I could view it without having to pause. Yeah, view email. So if I go here. So the uh, view email, if I, so see how right here it shows test first name? That is a, um, a, like a tag to where it will actually insert the person's name there. It will insert their first name there. It won't show what you see. So it would say like, uh, Angela, here's your roadmap to success, right? And then as I scroll down, the link is right here to the roadmap. They click on it, they get the link. Um, I haven't done the roadmap presentations in a while. In fact, we're, re we're completely rebuilding the whole roadmap right now. Let me see if it still goes to the link. Yeah, see, so there's the roadmap, has all that stuff on it. If you guys want on that list, just tell me. <laughs> um, so, but let me show you some of the other things that are in here. So as you scroll down, I give them a little bit of information. I say, if you have, and I let them know right here, PS, I've added you to my email list so that you can receive more information on how to best use this roadmap to maximize your results. If you have questions, reach me here. Then I give a little quote. This is one of my quotes. And then I have my signature, right? Um, well then you guys, the very next email. So the first email that they get from me, they got something for free, right? Oh, and look, I put right here, see how I highlighted it. I recommend laminating it after you print it. You guys, what does it do if they laminate it? It means they're going to keep it longer and they're probably going to treasure it more than just throwing it in their pile of other paperwork, right? So I, I, and when I hand the roadmap out to people, I actually give it to them laminated. All right. So let me X out of here. Let me show you a few more things and then I'll take more questions. Uh, so then the next email, this is the second email in the series. So this is a series campaign. They're going to receive this email exactly one day after they received this email. So if they sign up on Monday, they get email one on Monday. On Tuesday, they get this one. Let me go ahead and view this one. And then it shows, hey, so again, let me use the name, Angela. She, Angela, she chose you. Okay, look at how cool this is. First, you're like, I'm chosen for something and I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys on this. As you go through this email, it's like, you've been selected to receive a free strategy session with Barbara Kane, the creator of the SOS Roadmap herself, right? Now, every single person receives this email, <laughs> but it makes it feel like you're special because it's like, you've been chosen. How cool is that, right? And, um, and then it, talk, it like hypes me up. And then it says, are you ready to take it to the next level? And then you'll notice that this isn't me talking, right? Look at this was my office assistant who sent this one. Now, Brandy may or may not be a real person. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Brandy might be your, your second self that you, your, when you put this hat on, you call yourself Brandy, right? <laughs> like, but um, but see what happens there. There's a call to action. Miss Kane requires 72 hour notice, right? Um, schedule here. So when they click here, it would take them directly to my schedule. And it says, PS, in the field that asks for the reason for the call, type she chose me. How, how special does that make you feel if you're putting she chose me, right? Um, and so that's the second email. After they get that email, this one triggers one day after. Now you guys are probably like, how do you know how soon to do this? We actually have a system of how often you should send things, like on which days, um, for the best results. And so if you guys happen to work with a, like my company with email marketing, we have the exact system for you. But then the third email goes into chase the vision, not the money. And then this is the last one I'm going to show you and then I will take questions. But this one goes into their training now. So the first one was, here's something for free. Second one is, oh my, she chose you. Here's even something more for free. You get a call with Barbara herself. Third one goes into actual training of 
Um, what is your vision? So at the time of this, when I created this, the first step in the roadmap was creating your vision. It's not the first step anymore. Um, it's like the third step right now. There's a few other things we added before it, but because this was the first step, we gave some information here. This is my one to two paragraphs. Now mine are a little bit longer because these are people who, um, who are already attending my event. Right? Like they're already invested in learning from me. So mine are going to be longer than what yours should be at first. And then I share like, okay, now that I gave that, what is a vision? Um, a lot, and I have lots of links in here, right? And then down here, I give a quote. I give more resources that they could click to. None of these are my resources. These are showing my expertise as like, listen, here's other people that you could learn from. And then look at this, you guys, homework. Here's their action <laughs> items. Right. This is what I ask them to do. And then so then publicize that on your website. See, I'm, I'm happy. So even if they're not necessarily working for me, everybody who signed up on this list technically is still getting free learning from me. None of them are technically paid people. They're getting free training from me. Similar to what you guys are. You signed up to this 30 day list. You're getting free training from me. So you're invested in what I'm teaching, even though you've not invested money. Right. And so then it comes down here. And I think that I, yeah. Um, and then I believe my next one after this asks them like the question of, hey, how did that exercise go? And so, so there's just keeping in mind your strategy with how you're doing things. I'm going to look for questions now. So if anyone has questions, either raise your hand physically or press the raise hand button. Cause now all of you guys are down at the bottom in like a bar. <laughs> So I have to go through and click the button to see you all. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. I don't know if I should be terrified or proud. <laughs> proud. I don't know if I'm being thorough enough that no one has questions or I'm just confusing you guys. All right, Dwight. <laughs> Wait, you're muted, Dwight. I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. In my case, uh, this is all still quite a bit beyond my understanding technologically. Uh, I would call myself a uh, Neanderthal <laughs> to technology. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to follow along here, but uh, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't see me putting together something like this uh, yet. Uh, okay. I, I do see it in in the future because. I will need to incorporate something that can give people a better uh, roadmap of what I can do, you know, because I, I sales pitch myself all the time when people talk to me about work, they ask me what I can do, I give them a brief summary and then based on the conversation, I hone in on what it is that they're asking about my ability and I answer whether or not I can do it and describe my experience based off of that. But okay. uh, Basically, I what you're explaining here is uh, like college degree, and I'm like high school. Okay, so I appreciate you saying that. The good news is when you're ready to do this, you still have access to this training video. Okay, they're on YouTube now, so you guys can go back and you'll be able to learn again at that time. Another thing to keep in mind is, you guys, I recognize that you guys are not marketing experts like I am. I'm also not a carpenter expert, right? So, like, if I need carpentry, I'm going to call an expert on carpentry. Um, Phyllis is an expert on uh, design and uh, color and all that stuff. If I need help with that, I know who to call. Right. I, there's some things that you do yourself and some things you don't. No way in the world I'd ever try to change my own oil or my own car or my, or my own tire or flat or whatever. I mean, that's why I got married. I'm just playing. That's not why I got married. Don't tell Isaac. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I do have a question here. David asks, clicks and open. Please elaborate on that. Oh, thank you. Um, and I will in just a moment, but let me check Tracy's question too. Just my experience, it is better to put it into place at first rather than do it later when you need to. Tracy, that is so true. So what Tracy's saying is that while you may think that you don't need this yet, um, it, 
it, it, you might sit down and take one full day to set your email marketing up and it could be worth it for the for the long run because you could be capturing people's email addresses right now and if you wait one or two years you've lost out on at least dozens of people who you could have connected with so rather you do it yourself and you spend a whole day getting it figured out put the time in or if you hire someone to do it our company does offer email marketing it's not very expensive it's actually one of our lowest priced things that we do um, I'm not gonna give the prices on this because I don't want to be salesy but if you're interested just reach out to me uh, Tim you have a question how did you add the I think it was F name to include their first name how did you add that tag so that is, um, um, I will show you that right after I answer Dave's question. Thank you very much for asking it. Okay, you guys can still see my screen, right? Is, the, is my Zoom chat on the screen or no? Can you guys see that on my screen? I'm just trying to make sure it's not in the way. Okay, it looks like you guys cannot. Okay, all right, so let me go back to my list. Um, so Dave's question was to elaborate on the clicks and open. So if I go back to my audience, and you could have multiple lists, you guys. So for me, I have different lists for each of my different businesses, and I'm creating them as we go. Because right, just last year, I changed my business from two businesses to six businesses. I separated them out by their industry. And so we're only focusing on growing one business at a time over the next five years, and I'm creating them as I go. But let's go back to the one that we were just, no, I was in the roadmap one. Wasn't I in the roadmap one when I was showing you guys stuff? Yeah. Okay. So for the clicks and open, open and clicks. So open rates. And you're back. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. So open rates. Can you guys hear the kids in the background or no? Okay. If you do, just let me know because I will ask them to be quiet because I could hear them and I'm like, well, I wonder if you guys can. So right now, a good percentage for open is about, uh, probably about 12 to 13% is good. Um, I try to strive to get my people to 18%, which is outstanding, but about 12 to 13% is a good open rate. And as far as click rate goes, about one to 2% is average, but three to 5% is where you really want to be. All right, so let's move on. I want to show you the those um, those where to find those. So let me move this out of my way. So I might. Oh, let me go. Yeah, it was campaigns I was in. I'm sorry. So I'm going to show you guys how to see those numbers. I so wish I made time to do email. So Debbie, Debbie seconded what Tracy said. I so wish I made time to do email lists sooner, but better late than never. I agree, it is better late than never, but it is always better, better to do it sooner than later. <laughs> okay, so if I am in my list, which list am I in? I'm in the roadmap list. I'm gonna minimize this real fast. And I come to, let's say the, let's go to this welcome message one. Let's look at the stats on it. So if I go to view, view report here on the right hand side, and it will show there's 21 people during that time. You guys, I think there was only two times that I actually held these speaking things to get people on this list. So 21 people, there were 63 emails sent in total. Um, I don't do sales through my emails right now, so that's why all that's showing zero. But let's see, so my open rate is 61%. Now you guys, the reason why is because I gave a training and I was offering something for free. Right, I'm giving value. That's why my open rate is outstanding. My click rate is also outstanding. I haven't looked at these numbers in a while. It's because again, I've since since I last year I changed all my business stuff. The year before I had to take time off because stuff at home. And so it's been like two years since I've looked at this list. And the numbers were probably even like as far as like the industry standards were probably even lower then. But uh, mine were pretty good. And it is because of the value that is and that is being given but if you so look 39 opened 17 clicked um and there's only 21 people on the list so you could look at the um monthly performance you could look at the workflow so let's look at which one's got the best results so email one got 76 opens and 76 percent which means 16 out of those 21 opened it and eight of them clicked on the link to go to the roadmap to open it Okay, and then uh, on the next one, she chose you. 12 out of the 21 opened it. Six people clicked 
to, to schedule an appointment. So you guys, six people scheduled an appointment, a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me out of 21 people for me to be able to offer them something that they need that I could sell them because it was a phone conversation, okay? Six people that had I not sent that email would have been zero. So very, very important. And then chase the vision. So then it's um, 11 opens and three clicks. Okay. Now the clicks in this one were outside clicks, right? They weren't my things. This, the first one was the roadmap itself. The second one was scheduling a call with me. The third one was other people's resources. Dave, did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Dwight, question? Uh, no, I just wanted to say, I think it's really fantastic how uh, I heard when I, when I left the phone earlier that you said, your follow-up to she chose you was something that had them type that in that mm -hmm. was me as they're responding that's that's genius i i just I, I don't know who came up with that or how you got that but that that is just genius because that that like solidified it's like when you meet somebody and you use their name three times you know yes. during the conversation you're making you're assigning value to that person and and that's just really smart just want to say that Thank you for sharing that. So at this time, when I was doing all of this, um, I didn't have a team at that time. So this, all this was 100% me. I am blessed now to have a team. I'm, I'm up to four people on my team now. So woo woo. <laughs> I don't have to do all the work anymore. It's fantastic. I've, I've had many teams over the years. I wasn't a great leader back then. I'm a much better leader now, which means my team is more successful because you are only as successful as your leader, right? <laughs> um, all right, so moving on, I wanted to show you guys HubSpot. Well, that's not HubSpot. HubSpot, is this one HubSpot? I, I have so many tabs open. There's HubSpot, okay. I have so many tabs open and they're being hidden by the toolbar. So in HubSpot, um, this is the CRM system that I use, which is separate from the email marketing. Um, I have, I do have people's email addresses in HubSpot, but I'm not marketing to them through this. So it's okay to have people's emails in here because I use them for if I just send an email to them, like a one-on-one -on -one email. Like if I just send Tim an email, it's okay to do that, right? Even if you are marketing, you just have to have the permission to add them to an email list, okay? So in here, if I go to contacts, and in fact, I have a whole list of things that I need to add from my calls with people today that I need to add into this system. And so I go to contacts first. And this, this particular HubSpot is the one that I share with my whole team, which we just started um, this year now that we've switched everything over. But um, I have a separate one that I use for my personal life that includes like even my family and my friends, not just business people, but the ones in here are my business people. And um, so if I click on somebody's name and I open up their thing and Marie is one of our, she was the one who had to go because her grandson. So, um, so I'm gonna market her a little bit as I do this. So as you guys see, there are, there are times when I had calls with Marie and I logged the call. So January, 2020, January 10th, right? The, she and I talked, here's my notes from that call. When we talked on this day, here's my notes from that call. So when I have calls, all the people I met with this morning, I'll be putting yours in. So in order to do that, I just go over log. So I'm in her, her thing, her, her uh, record. I go to log and I go to call. I'm gonna move you guys because you're in my way again. And Marie, I connected with her today. If you left a message or something, you could put that, but I connected. And then the call was today. And let's see, my meeting with Marie was at 9.30 this morning, right here. And then I would just write right here, whatever notes I want. I'm just gonna kind of put something like that in there because I'm not gonna type all my notes right now. But you guys, here's what's really cool about HubSpot and other CRM systems, is I can create a follow-up task. So if Marie told me that she was looking, and in fact, let me just be, um, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. Dwight, I'm going to, I'm going to prospect you here on, on, on the air. <laughs> okay. So Dwight shared in his video today that he needs help with time management. 
And those of you who know me well know that I'm a time management expert. So when I put my notes of the videos into my CRM today, I'm going to say Dwight needs help with, with time management. My, my follow-up task for Dwight is going to be to send him some time management tips because I'm going to give value first. After I give Dwight so many tips, there's going to be a point where I say, Dwight, here's how you can pay me to get more time management help. <laughs> Right. So, so you guys, so again, having that strategy in place, knowing when to po when to share, when to ask, when to give, right. So knowing all those things in a, in, in a strategic order. And the best way to know that is if you're tracking everything. And so let's say that I talked to Dwight five times in a month and every time he, he was late for our call. And then he's like, I just, I'm stressed out because I never have enough time to do anything. <laughs> Dwight's never been late for a call with me, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm just saying that, but if I'm catching all these things, then when I, when I do, when I do send a promotion to him to pay me, I might say, Dwight, listen, like, don't you want to make time? Don't you want to be able to stop being late for calls and, you know, and, and you touch on those pain points, right? And then it makes the person, and obviously you don't say it in a way that offends them. Um, some people do. I will tell you, I was listening to a sales training last night and the person was like, just tell, like she, she was going through an objective of, well, this woman said she had to ask her husband. And I was like, really? You ask your husband everything you do? And I was like, oh my gosh, I would never say that to someone. <laughs> But some people do, you guys, and it's just a matter of what your personality is, not one right or wrong, but it's just what your personality is. And um, I see that I have a chat question here too, but just making sure that you know what you have to offer and when it's the right time to offer and when it's the right time to give. Phyllis, I don't have a monkey for my chair, but I need to answer the door. <laughs> Janice, Barb thinks I have a business call at three, have to get off. Okay, great. All right. Thank you guys for your um, comments and questions so far. I didn't realize we were already at three o'clock. Thank you to those of you who are still hanging out with me. Remember when I told you guys I thought this was going to be like 20 or 30 minute trainings? I just get too excited. I want to give you guys everything I have. So <laughs> I know there's not time for that. So let me wrap up. Um, let me just make sure there was nothing serious I needed to talk to you about. Okay, we're going to wrap up this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to bring my pretty face back on and see all your pretty faces. Dwight, you have a question. Uh, I just want to remind everybody to please, if you're mindful, to pray. Please pray for uh, Marie. Uh, Thank she you. She had to leave for somebody had to go for 104 fever. Yeah, or her like grandson. I didn't, I didn't read it. Somebody else said that, but, you know, keep her in your prayers, please. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you very much. Yes. And um, in, in the group, I posted a spot for you guys to list events. So I'm not going to ask you to say them now, but if you can put, if you have any online events that you want people to support you on, you could post them on that post. Please look for that post. It's in the announcements tab. Um, anything that I want you guys to continually go to will always be in the announcement tab. So if you're ever confused, like where do I find it? Check the announcement tab first. Um, and then everything you need is on there including where you can find other stuff and um i know that most of the people in this group are faith-based by some sort and so um if if you want to post something like prayers for uh, marie i think that's fine if somebody's offended by it i apologize to you in advance but um um i think that most of the people that i know in this group are faith-based of some sort all right any other questions before i tell you guys what your homework is and your contest tim can you tell us um, how you created that tag in MailChimp? Oh, that is a good question. Yes. Okay. So I will, um, let me give the homework and then I'll do that that way if anyone wants to leave. Don't let me forget. Yep. Thank you. Um, okay. So homework. Homework. Okay. So you need to sign up for an email platform if you're not already signed up for one. Again, most of them offer a free version or at least a free trial. I want you to add five people to your email list. You guys, there's been about 10 or 11 people on this call. So you can probably get five of those people to be on your list. Anyone can add me. If you want to add me to your list, mine is, um, well, the best one to do is probably Barbara. Well, let's do the marketing and media one because that's what we're doing. Barbara at fusemarketingandmedia.com. The word and is spelled out. You can put me on your list. That is a A-okay. I just realized I'm putting this on YouTube. So there's going to be a lot of people adding me to their list. <laughs> That's okay. I know how to unsubscribe if there's something I don't like. All right. Um, 
after you, so here's the thing, sign up if you're not already signed up for one, add five people to your list. Of course, you can add more than five if you want, but strive to get five. And then write and send your first email. I know I didn't go through how to send just a regular email without it being the campaign. So if you need help, just call me. It is pretty self-explanatory though. Um, but if you do need help, I'm always happy to help. Someone today made a comment that I'm trying not to ask you to help too much. Guys, that's what I'm here for. Please ask, okay? Um, and then the fourth thing is I want you to post in the group that you sent an email. Okay, and this needs to, this can't be through your Gmail or your Yahoo. It has to be through an email marketing platform. You could also share which platform you chose if you want. Um, if, if you want to tell people anything that you learned about the different platforms, any of that information that you guys want to share, it is in unit five. There is a homework um, uh, post. Share anything about the homework in that as a comment, okay? And then I do have a content. Oh, and then there, it will say on the homework thing that it's a bonus if you create an IFO, which is an irresistible free offer. That takes a lot of time to explain. So I can't really train on that in this. Like I said, we train on it in our mastermind group, but we don't on th this training wouldn't allow me enough time. So if you don't do that, that's okay. But if you do it, you'll get a bonus and maybe, maybe I'll send you a gift. <laughs> um, and so the contest for tonight is different. It does not involve email marketing. Um, even though I want you to still do your email marketing homework because I am watching, I keep attendance and I keep track of everybody who does homework. And there may or may not be something special for that at the end. <laughs> okay, so the, the contest is, for today is an whole weekend long contest. It will go from, uh, actually it goes from the start of this group, which was five days ago, all the way until Monday at 1 p.m. So some of you already have entries into this contest. So, so all the way until Monday at 1 p.m. is when it's going to stop. And it's going to be an invite people who could use this training. Now, you don't get credit by just inviting people, you get credit by when they join. So my recommendation is not to just hit the invite button because people get confused and they're like, what is this? Why is she inviting me? And so I'm going to just show you real quick the best way to invite people so that you actually get success in people joining. So when you are on the page, can you guys see my screen yet? Yes, okay. So when you're on the page, up here at the top, there is a link. It goes facebook.com forward slash groups, and then there is a number. If there's anything after the number, you don't want the stuff after the number. You want just all the way up until this slash after the number. And I would copy that, go to a private message, and then paste that in a private message to someone and explain to them why you think they should join the group, okay? Now, you can definitely have um, a templated message, but if you use a templated message, I recommend you use the person's name. So you might say, hey, Kim, I belong to this group for about a week now. I'm learning so much. Thought you'd love it. Send it. Hey, Angela, I belong to this group for about a week now. I think you'd love it. Send the link, right? So you could send the same thing to everybody. Just don't make it sound like it's the same thing that you're sending to everybody. And make sure you don't accidentally copy and paste one person's name and send it to someone else because that's super embarrassing. Been there, done that. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. That's how we get good, right? And so, so I'm going to stop share now. And so what's going to happen is Monday at one o'clock is when the contest will end because <clears throat> I need to be able to count everybody's entries and I need time to do that before 1.30. So it's gonna end at one. It's going to count however many people actually join the group. And the prize for this is a big prize. You guys, this is like a $1,500 prize that I'm giving away for this. Now, I encourage you to only invite people that you truly think could use this and will engage in the group because otherwise we have a stagnant group of people that are doing nothing and getting nothing. So. Um, you can also share the link on your on your Facebook wall, your business or your personal page and see if people join that way. <clears throat> there is a, um, on the questions, like when they ask to join, one of the questions says, who invited you to this group? So um, I just added that today. So you guys don't necessarily have to tell them, make sure you say I invited you. It, it's already a question for them. All right, and let me see. 
So I mentioned all that. The monkey represents the one. You don't you don't invite everyone from your friends list. Yes, thank you, Tracy. I had someone do that last week to me. Yeah, please don't invite everyone from your friends list, you guys, because it, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense for people to be in this group if it's not useful to them. If they're not going to get value, it won't be good for them. It won't be good for you guys. It won't be good for me. So invite people who can actually get value from this group. Any last questions before I go into the next part of, okay, yes, Dwight. You're just asking to, for them to join the Facebook group, not this actual course that we're taking. Well, the Facebook group is technically the course. So this group is specifically for the course. So it's the oh, okay. answer to both is yes. <laughs> all right so if they if they join this they get all of the information that we're all getting right now exactly they'll have access to all the replays they'll have access to be part of this call in the future and all that too yep i, w I was selective in my invites but i just went down and i just i just sent it to each person that i thought would benefit from this okay uh, if you notice that i already made some some invites i don't know if you can tell that i did I, yes and dwight you have some already like i have you counted for some already there's about th four of you guys who already have some you're going to get one point for everybody who joins so some of you guys already have some points um nobody has so many points that they should be disqualified i don't think anyone has more than four or five points right now so you're all still pretty even but dwight so here's what happened after you invited people I sent them a private message that said something along the lines of, uh, hi, John, I noticed that Dwight, our mutual friend Dwight invited you to my group, called, and I gave the group name, and I said, I'm just checking to make sure it's something that interests you. If you're not interested in it, please let me know, and I'll just take you off of it so that you don't, you're not bothered by it, but if you are interested, I just need your email address to get you into the group. Most of those people, well, many of those people may not see that message because I'm not friends with them. So it might be good for you to go back and say, hey, I invited you to this group and then send them the link so that they can try to join them. Okay. Um, I did have one person who was honest and said, I really don't have time to be part of a group right now. Thanks for asking me before adding me. So that's why I do that. I don't want to add people who don't want to be here. Tim? Do we add them? Do we share the link to the public group or do we share the link to the Eventbrite? Um, to the public group. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Great question. So that was the one, the facebook.com group link that I showed. All right. So I've given everybody everything they have. If nobody else has any questions, I'm going to answer Tim's question. You guys are welcome to stay as long as you want, or you can go if you need to. I'm so sorry. This took way longer than I expected. Dwight has another question. Well, Dwight's well, going to get the for the most questions. <laughs> I'm waving goodbye. Oh, you're waving goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Dwight. Have a great All day, right. everybody. I'm sorry, I had to let the plumber in. That's okay. I'm just giving you guys a little bit of extra training right now. So if anyone needs to go, I understand. But well, I have a question, Barbara. Yeah. <coughs> I thought in, in my feeble mind that's on overload that you set up a MailChimp for me. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I do? Yep, you have one. And so I don't want to go in to set it up and duplicate what my where it is, what my password. I don't have a clue. I haven't used it, but. You gave me one, right? Yes. If you do a search in your in your email for my name, the password should be in your email, all your login info. If you can't find it, just let me know and I will send okay. it. Okay. All right. And Barbara, I have two questions. Yes. Uh, can you please post the steps that we need for our assignment? They are and, in the units already. Unit oh, they're in the unit. Okay. Yep. And then um, and the contest is in there as well? The contest is not, but I will okay. post that. Thank you for letting me know that. Okay, that's and if you can put the link for the con for the um, web page on that. Got it. Because I Got seem it. like I went back to this, and it's a lot longer address. <laughs> that is okay. All right, sounds Thank good. Thank you. Just, you're welcome. All right. Any other questions before I share my screen? All right. Here. No. Sharing my screen now, and the question was, um, how do you make the tag? So here's a great question. I'm, I'm actually going to show you guys right now how to do an email and add the tag into it. How's that sound? Because you guys need to know how to make an email since you're doing the homework. Um, and that's the easiest way for me to show you how to do the tag anyway, is to go into an email, a new email. And Barbara, while you're doing it, could you also show me how you made the evergreen? So yeah. that when somebody subscribes to you, it would automatically get an email? Yeah, so when you do, when you click create here, and you okay. go, uh, let me move you guys out of the way again. 
So when you go to email here, create email, the first email is a regular email. If you choose automated email, that's the evergreen. Okay. Okay, so the first regular is just one email you're sending out. This is where you would send like your monthly newsletter. <clears throat> this is the stuff that people are opening right now. The automated stuff, you wouldn't put any kind of dates or time sensitive stuff in it. Okay? And if we're going to do a regular one, and I'm going to just call this um, training. And begin. I actually feel like, remember that one that was like data like April 14th meeting? I think that might have been something similar to this. I think I just set it up to show like a training. <laughs> it was like just coming to me as I started doing that. All right, so let me move you guys out of the way again. I'll move you down here. All right, so now it's got the name here. It's asking who are you sending the campaign to? So if you click add recipients, you choose the audience. Let's say I'm going to send them to my, um, uh, let's see, my Fuse business. Tips, right mm. and then and then it says do you want to segment the audience oh oh yeah let me do this let me choose you guys so fuse marketing and media do i want to segment the list look at this i want to choose just my covid19 people right the people who did the covid19 training so even though you guys technically are the only people in that list right now if there was more people that didn't have this tag they wouldn't receive this email so in fact later you guys will get an email that's like after the training is over you'll get an email from me saying <clears throat> actually you guys get an email around day 5, 15, and 30, I think. Um, so I think today you'll get an email, actually. All right, so you could personalize the to field. So even in the, like, um, the subject, like, not the subject, the, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, when you see your email, you know how it just shows your email address a lot of times when it says to, and it shows your email address? I could actually choose to have it say just their first name or both their first name and their last name. By default, if you don't choose any of these, it's just gonna show their email as who it's sending to. Okay, I'm gonna hit save. And then it's saying from, who would you like to send this to? I like to put my name first because people know me, right? They know Barbara. And then I like to put the business name in these brackets just so they know which business it's coming from, especially because I have multiple businesses. But even if you only have one business, it's still nice to have your business name in the from section as well. And then the email address that it comes from. Um, and then you hit save. Um, I already did this, send verification. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna just choose a different one for right now because I'm not gonna go in and verify that while I'm on the phone with you guys. Oh wait, that, um, this one I think I have in here already. Usebusinessstream.com. Okay, yeah, that one's already verified, so I could save that one. All right, and then subject. So here's where you write your subject line. And you can actually add um, the tag in here as well. And I know the I know the tag by heart, I believe still. And so I'm just going to put it in here. There we go. We'll see if that's right when we get in there. But so I could say um, put the tag in, and then I could say nice to meet you or um, whatever I whatever I wanted to do here, right? Um, with the subject. You make the subject whatever is your email. If you don't know the tag, where did you find that? Or where would you find that? I'm, I'll show you as soon as I get in there. Um, and Thank you. Once you know what the tag is, uh, you, you could also Google it, I'm sure, too. But I just always knew it and I just kept putting it in. But again, I haven't done much of this since I've been back in business for just the past couple months. But uh, okay, so preview text. This is where, have you ever seen like, let me see if I could go to my let me go to my email. So while that loads, you know how like it shows who it's from and then it gives kind of like, a, you could see a little bit of what the email is before you click on it. That's the preview text. Right, and so there's sometimes a subject and also preview text, right? right. So, so there's both. I recommend adding something in both the subject and the preview text. Right. The preview text could be a one sentence summary of what you're sending. The subject line needs to be, um attention grabbing don't make that one boring put your boring preview summary thing in the preview text okay i'm a person who 
I like to say exactly what I'm giving and it tends to sound boring because if I'm giving time management tips, I say, hey, here's time management tips. Okay, well, that may or may not be engaging enough for someone to open it. So you have to say something like, that really grabs their attention like, I can't believe this happened. And then in it, I'm like, I can't believe this happened because my time management's so bad, right? Or, or something like that. And, and so you've got to give it, it's got to catch their attention because otherwise they're just bored. Never put in your subject newsletter number 56 or whatever, April newsletter, stuff like that. That's so boring. Nobody's going to open that. And then so once you have that, you hit save. Now here in the content and the design, that's where we're going to uh, put what we were doing in here. Now you could choose any of these themes. So just kind of like look at it. You're able to add color, logos, pictures, all that. So just choose what you want. Don't worry about it being too complex. In fact, I use this simple text one a lot for mine. Um, and I also use this first one for mine too. But and but I think I have some save templates. So I'm going to go into the save templates. Once you create a template, you could save it. I'll show you how to do that. So this one right here was one that I was liking to use. Yeah, I have a lot of save templates from my, my days of a lot of things. <laughs> All right, so once I'm in this template, to change something, I just click in the box and then over here on the right, it allows me like if I wanna replace that image, down here, if I want to change this, I click on it, it brings me a box over to the right. Now, if I wanted to add a person's name, up here where it says merge tags, do you guys see where my cursor is? Yep. I click first, wow. and look at that, I had the code right, I remember. Wow. So, and so you could even put their first name and last name. You could put, um, you could put like the date they subscribe, like all kinds of different things you could put in here. I only ever use the first name one. Okay. Um, and then let's say that I like this design that I made. You know, I have my signature down here. Um, I have, I have the picture at the top and I like this. I could actually click on template and hit um, save this design as a template. And then I won't have to recreate it every time that I want to send an email. All right, did that answer all the questions that people have? Any other questions? Yes, that was excellent, thank you. You are welcome. So now that you guys got value, go and fight your friends. They've got to sign up by 1 p.m. on Monday to count for the contest. And I promise you that you do want to participate in this contest because it is a super awesome prize. It might be the best prize I'm giving away during the whole contest. So, <laughs> and I'll put that link out there for you guys so that you have access to easily copy and paste it to invite people. I think the book that you have for me is the best so far. <laughs> Aw, <Okay>. good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, see, it just isn't it neat how the right people get the right gifts, prizes? How do you attach art, David asked. Okay, well, real quick, uh, let me show you that, David. So basically right here is, there's already an image in this one. So if I wanted to change an image that's already there, I would just hit replace. But if I wanted to add an image which wasn't one, then I would click this picture up here, this little uh, content studio. I would just click that and then it would ask me to either choose a picture I'm already using or have used, or I could hit upload to find one from my computer. Okay. All right. All righty, so I think that's it. So I'm gonna get off here, you guys. This was a super long call. I hope that it was worth your time to be on it for so long. Thank you, Barbara. You are welcome. For some reason, I don't know what's happening. Thank you Bye. very Adios, much. Bye, guys. Bye. All righty. Bye-bye.